Good morning, everyone. Eagle X here uh, from ATX area. I have this week in Digimon newsletter for the Digimon TCG for the week of February 7th. This is like our eighth newsletter. If you appreciate and like this content, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate the help and support as I try to improve this channel. And I try to incorporate your guys' suggestions to make these better looking and overall quality videos. That being said, let's go ahead and get rolling on with the news. So first things first, I want to talk about Oceana results. Oceana in first place, we were able to see Jesmon take it all for their nationals, followed by a second place, low fluke finish, and then a third place Jesmon finish again. Uh, congrats to these uh, three players for their great accomplishment. And if you want to see more of the top 16 deck lists, I'll have the link below in the description of this video. Because it's really cool. Look, there's like a hex blot list in top 16 even. So very cool to see how their meta is developed compared to our meta over here. But I know a lot of my viewers are from North American region. They want to see North American nationals. Well, don't worry, guys. I have you right here. So first thing I want to point out is this was our top eight bracket. This will also be in the description below with all the deck lists of all these players. But we had actually a very good variety for our top eight finishers. We had two security control slash mega zoo players, two little players, two Gabu Bond players, and no Jez Mons, but I'm totally blank what the other two are at the moment. But like I said, if you want to look at the deck list, I'll have the link below in the description. But we had Chung Man taking it all with Gabu Bond with his list right here. And it's like your bread and butter uh, staple of Gabu Bond lists. Uh, the biggest unique part about his build is he utilizes a little bit more versatility and options. He has the four ice wall, four hammer spark, the busted cards, one Kakaida's breath, three howling memory boost, one forbidden trident, and he uses one Ikakumon from the EX set and the Sora Joe for extra memory and Kiaramon for extra draw. Then second place we had Brent Sosa's build, another Gabubon list. Like I said before, it's pretty bread and butter staple, utilizing very similar cards and similar counts as Chung Man. And then we have a little flip list. And if you guys don't know, little flip kind of farms on security control and other control style decks as it has explosive turns with really big, hard to deal with boards. So the idea with this build is you can either leave a stack out vulnerable, but emergency program shutdown to keep it safe or you can start looping and when you loop you end on a mass day for the last level five so you can burn a damage call a uh, promote swing with promote and it became two damage if you can't attack with that lady debbie or rebelli whatever level five you call so congrats on the awesome build and performance and just to go with it the fourth place low flute build pretty similar when you have the mirror match it really comes down to who can finish first or get their combo off first with less bricking. A uh, big difference here is Titamon is the support rather than Mastamon. But congratulations to all these players and everyone who played this weekend. It was a lot of fun to watch. Awesome commentators the entire way also. But that wraps up our BT6 EX1 format here in America. We have a little bit more like till the end of the month basically until we have BT7 come around. And when BT7 comes around, we're going to have a brand new format with the hybrids and new man restriction list as well. So, uh, talking about future formats, I want to kind of touch on our BT9 card highlights. The first one being Alphamon or Ken Uh If you guys have not seen, this is the first secret reveal of the BT9 set. And the first black box text says you can digivolve well for three from Alphamon with Orumon and its Digivolution cards. So not only does it need the main name of Alphamon, but it also needs Orumon and the Digivolution sources, which isn't hard. You can shove things under in the ex-ante body uh, decks with some of their options and some of their uh, traits for digivolving and all that. But his digivolving effect is to lead all of your opponent's Digimon at the highest play costs. So this is effectively an Iron Fist Onslaught from a Digivolving effect. And then the end of turn effect is once per turn, you may return up to seven non-Digi-8 cards with X antibody and their traits from this Digimon's cards to the bottom of their owner's deck in order to gain one memory for each card returned. So it's a way to extend your turn. So even if you don't get the cheaper Digivolving, you can Digivolve for seven. You can use his end of turn effect once per turn to shove everything underneath your deck 
First of all, extending your deck, helping against deck out. Second of all, you gain seven memory. It can be blocked, though, with uh, your memory blockers like Chumon and Madoki Betamon. So that's something you will have to keep in mind. But, it, like I said, it just extends play, though. It lets you do more with your deck. And then the other card I want to highlight is Cool Boy. He's like this niche tamer that works with the X antibody traits, so he's probably going to be a new staple tamer that becomes like a two of. But on play, you reveal three cards from the top of your deck. You add one Digimon card with X antibody and its traits, and one option card with X antibody and its traits to your hand. So it allows you to effectively go plus one in hand, because you have the card to replace him, and then the card that would be in addition to that. And then during your turn, when one of your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon of the same level with X antibody and its traits, so the idea is you go from like a Were Gururu to a Were Gururu X antibody, you would be able to proc this to suspend the tamer to gain a memory and draw one. So really strong support for two memory and security effect is to play a card without paying its memory costs. Pretty stable for any tamer we have in any format. And moving on, talking about future formats, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Japan meta and format. It's been a moment since I talked about this, but I want to emphasize this is going to be the first results, like halfway through this week of results, that we see the new ban and restriction list coming into effect. Savior Huck, Ice Mon, Memory Boost, Reinforced Memory Boost, and Ice Wall all being limited to a one of. While Mega Digimon Fusion is the first advanced card of the game, in addition to the old green stuff, uh, level 5 Argamon and Hidden Potential Discover. So this is probably going to be the last week we see heavy emphasis with the yellow hybrid, blue hybrid, and probably little to the same extent. You'll see win rate 60% kind of replace it, but this is what we currently have. I expect to see more V armor decks pop up as it seems to be a really strong mechanic that never got a chance to see the light of day as well, but it still utilized Ice Wall to kind of stall out the games. With that being said, that's our BT8 format uh, with EX2 cards before BT9 comes out and the restriction list. So if you guys want to, feel free to leave comments below how you think this is going to shift the format in Japan. I think it's going to allow more deck creativity and we'll probably see a new deck to rule them all for a bit. But Jezmon won't be as dominant, or at least until the new starter deck Jezmon comes out. Because we know what happened with the Massimon starter deck. And now I want to go to our mailbag segment. This is where if you guys have questions, I will answer them here on my YouTube videos. It gives me some stuff to talk about for topics. I think it's a lot of fun. Last week we talked about pre-release format. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop comments below with some questions for me. Uh, it could be talking about the TCG. It could be talking about how I speculate or build this content even. <laughs> speculate in terms of market stuff on how I feel about it. But that being said, uh, any questions, drop them down below. Oh, I accidentally hit the four button twice there. But uh, now I want to move on to our events. First, for IRL events, we have Digimon Card Game Fest coming up in Arlington, Texas and Miami, Florida. This is going to be in March 19th through 20th for Texas, 26th through 27th for Miami. Got all these cards here. If you guys don't know, you got your Digi Egg set, the Fest set, the Vault, the vault set, and the Participation set. Uh, those are all going to be very accessible for people at these events with new max rarities of some of these cards, along with the Wolf Mons for the top three uh, performers in each format uh, or in each events uh, top cut. And then finally, I want to announce a fun new local event for people here in the ATX area. We're going to have a BT4 draft. Basically, if you guys come for Magic, you know a very popular way to play the game is for them to draft decks. Starting with three packs per person, what you'll do is you'll crack open a pack, pick a card for your deck, and you'll pass the rest of the pack around. This is going to happen until all three packs have been ran out, the cards you drafted you'll use to build your deck, and this is going to be similar to pre-release format where colors are not a restriction unless you are using options. So it gives you some deck building creativity. And if you guys enjoy this, definitely come check it out. I'll be talking about this again in my next newsletter and I'll be excited to host this for everyone. And last thing I want to touch on is Digimon Locals here in the ATX area got Dragon's Lair on Friday, Game Castle Free Play on Saturday, and Juniors at Sunday. 
With that being said, if you guys enjoy this content, please like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate your support with these videos. And with that being said, take care, y'all.